Hey guys, this is Ted, and here we're looking at another milestone on the Cobra project, which is I've got the rear axle rebuilt and physically in place underneath uh, the, the Cobra. Uh, I ran out of time tonight to bolt it up, but I decided I'd do a little video on progress update, and uh, tomorrow, tomorrow night hopefully I'll get the whole thing bolted in and, uh, and finish this part of the project. Um, before I get into this too much, I want to make an endorsement for steel-toed boots. Um, I have a pair of Red Wing boots on. Whether you buy Red Wing or Walmart, um, wear steel-toed boots in the garage. I'm really good about wearing safety glasses and hearing protection. I've been really lax about wearing steel toes and I regretted it last two weekends ago when this rear axle fell on my right toe. Um, it still hurts. It's not pretty. I'm not gonna, I'll spare you the gory details, but um, yeah, wear steel-toed boots. I wasn't even actually working on the axle when it happened. I just tripped over it and it then fell on my toe. Fortunately, it wasn't on my kids, um, but uh, yeah. So anyway, so back to the axle. Uh, if you watched the last video I posted, uh, I was going through the process of rebuilding the differential. And what I ended up doing was essentially a complete rebuild. Basically, the only thing I've kept uh, only two things I've kept are the housing itself, the, the main rear axle, and then also the limited slip differential uh, carrier in the middle. Uh, and even that I rebuilt with new clutches, um, which I, I went over in the last video. Um, when I tore this whole thing apart, I knew it was in bad shape, and as I continued to tear, it, tear into it, well, and let me back up, when I say bad shape, what I really mean is that it was put together incorrectly. Uh, when whoever put it together put the 373s in. And then as I got more and more into it, I came to realize just how incorrectly it was put together. So I'm going to share a couple of tips that I learned along, along the way. Um, I think the first thing I'll point out is that this is a Factory 5 3 link. And if you take a look, there's a few parts to this that change versus stock. Um, First part is you have this bracket here, and it's not really obvious to see, but this bracket bolts onto the uh, the axle, and then you got a couple of other brackets, one over here, and then another one on the other side that bolts up as well. Um, as you can see, sort of, I painted it, painted the housing as as well. I just used Pour 15 gloss black. Once I started painting, I realized well these brackets that bolt on are flat black and I've decided to go with gloss black so you know minor detail um, I should have just bought flat black it doesn't bother me that much so I'm gonna leave it alone um, I painted the housing in the beginning of the process basically after I dis disassembled it and I think that was a good call overall um, I am gonna have to do some touch-ups you can see here I was keeping the housing on the, this axle on a couple of uh, jack stands, which made it really easy to work on because when you're working on an axle, you end up turning it over. And so that was a really easy way to do it. Also made it easy for it to fall off onto my toe. So uh, take that for what it's worth. I, I still think it was a good way to do it overall. Um, so I would have I would have waited on painting it. Um, so getting back to some of the things that were wrong with this though, when I, when I first took the axle out of the car and I spun the flange up in the front, right over here, where the drive shaft attaches, um, the first thing I noticed was that there was effectively zero resistance. And that's not how it's supposed to be. Um, I didn't have a spec on it, but every single axle that I've ever dealt with has some level of resistance in it. And, that's caused basically by preload in the bearings, and you want that. Uh, this had no preload in the bearings uh, for either the pinion or for the, the differential uh, carrier. And the other thing that I noticed, and, and this all made sense later once I started putting things together, was that the shims that exist here in the back of the differential were sticking out. They're supposed to sit in between the bearings and the housing to get the backlash, to set your backlash correctly. And and they they weren't they, they were sticking out and they had been getting eaten up by the axle as it was spinning. And that's because there was no preload on the bearings. So when I put all this back together I was essentially 
going from scratch and having to make some educated guesses. Um, there's a whole lot of videos on here on YouTube about how to set these 8.8s and I'm not going to go into too much detail on it but the couple of things that I found uh, when I did this. The first one is when I took it all apart the pinion, uh, the pinion shim and that's a shim that sits basically right about here between the bearing on the inside of the pinion uh, inside the differential and the pinion itself and that that sets the pinion depth in or out so that shim was set was a 30 thousandths shim which i ha i believe from what i've read that's probably what ford uh, put in it when it left the factory back in 95. Um, from what I was reading up, it seems like a large number of people who use these Ford Performance gears end up somewhere between 24 and 28 thousandths shims uh, thickness. So I decided to just put 28 thousandths worth of shim in there, and then I put everything together on the pinion. I put the seal in the front and all, and I hoped that I would get it correct the first time and not have to take it apart because. If the, if the gear mesh pattern's bad, then you gotta pull the pinion out, it's a real pain. Um, when you're tightening the pinion down, you've got this nut here on the front, right here on this flange that you have to tighten down. Ford has a special tool that basically goes into two of these bolt holes um, to hold the flange in place so that you can tighten it down. I just used a, a big old pry bar um, and that worked just fine for me. Um, and when you torque this down, you don't torque it down to a specific torque value. What you do is you torque it down to what's called a, a, pre, a um, preload. And there's, these, there's a crush, wa or a crush um, spacer in here. And you basically tight, keep on tightening it down until you have, uh, I think the spec is 16 to 28 inch pounds worth of resistance. And that's a moving resistance as you're turning this flange. It's a lot harder now because I got everything together. Um, so I'll tell you that's a very sensitive adjustment. Um, the first time that I did it, fortunately I had two sleeves. The first time I did it, I was at 20 inch pounds uh, worth of resistance. I wanted it a little tighter because that was sort of on the bottom end of the spec. I moved it just a hair and it went up to about 50 inch pounds. So if you get something that's within the spec, my advice is to just leave it alone. Because then I had to tear it all back apart, put a new spacer in, and start over again. Um, let me also show you what I went out and bought so that I could measure this resistance properly. Um, you might say, well, how do you measure this? Because it's a moving resistance, and most of us have click-type torque wrenches. So I just went out and I bought this inch pound uh, beam type torque wrench and this worked really well um, I had to buy I, I had to do use several adapters and you'll notice I got a hex driver here because um, the only uh, socket I had that was the correct size with was a three-quarter inch drive and I don't have an adapter to go from half inch drive to three-quarter inch drive this did the trick um, I really should get the proper adapter and I will one day but basically you put this in you move it and then you watch the beam to see if it's at the proper location of around, um, like I said, 16 to 28 inch pounds. Look it up, don't go by, based off of what I said on YouTube. Um, so second time I got it right and then it came down to putting the differential in. So I, I wasn't gonna trust any of the shims that were in there because of what had happened. Um, if you read up, a lot of people say that whatever shims were in there the first time, just put them in again and it's fine. And I'm sure that's normally the case if it was put together properly. But in this case, I knew that there wasn't any preload on the bearings and I wanted there to be an appropriate amount of preload. There's no spec on this, so you kind of have to go by feel. Um, I used to do bearings for jet engines for a living, so I, I think I have an okay feel for bearings and uh, what an appropriate preload is. Um, if this blows up, then obviously I'm wrong. But basically, um, I just use the spacers that the spacers and put shims in between to get an amount of preload where I had to I, I had to tap in the spacers and the shims 
but not something where I had to really force it in with, um, you know, with a hammer and do it hard. Um, and I ended up having to do this a few times. I had to take it out to get the backlash set correctly. Um, and there was enough resistance in pulling the differential out that I feel like I got the preload set pretty well. Um, then I did the gear mesh pattern. There's a whole lot of videos on this. Um, I'll be honest, I had a hard time seeing a truly clear and obvious discernible pattern. I think a lot of the videos out there in some cases might have some used gears or maybe they're different gears than what I was using. Uh, I was using Ford Performance for everything. Um, and uh, but when I basically what I found was that it had real solid consistent engagement across the teeth um, and none of the patterns that indicated that I needed to change things. Um, I had the backlash right at around um, nine to ten thousandths. The spec is eight to twelve, so I think that's pretty good. Um, another another thing that I went ahead and replaced was actually the differential flange here. Um, when I took it off, and I think I talked about this in my last video, there was a ridge where the seal was riding, and the front uh, this front seal was leaking. Now, I'm sure when these guys did it. Uh, when they put the 373s in, I'm sure that they did it completely wrong and that they didn't replace the seal or anything like that. Um, but, you know, you want to do this once, you want to do it right, so for the 38 bucks that it cost to buy that from Summit, and I was buying some other stuff, so it was free shipping, I figured that was a worthwhile investment. So, put the cover on, on the back with just some black RTV. Um, they have gaskets, uh, but I've found that RTV on these 8.8s works really well. Um, and uh, I think the only other thing I'll mention is that uh, the brakes I'm using on the back are what are called, are, are off of a um, SN95 uh, Mustang Cobra. Um, but I have, I bought um, adapters and I bought axles from uh, North Race Cars. Uh, so what they sell is they sell the, um, the axles that will get to the proper fox body width. The, the fox body axles are a little bit narrower than the SN95s, and so that will let me fit a wider tire in back. I'm planning on 315s um, to make sure I get lots of traction. So real happy with the setup that I bought um, and uh, got it all together. Everything is really, really tight. There's, when, when you move it, there's, there's very little play. If uh, you probably can't see too much, but basically there's just that you, you can tell that there's about that nine to ten thousandths worth of play in there, which is exactly what you want. I like having a real, real nice and tight uh, drivetrain so that you know you don't feel slop and having it bang back and forth when you let on and off the gas. And I think this will be the this will be just right. Obviously, you don't want it too tight. If you have zero backlash, then you can start having problems as well. But um, I, I have never rebuilt a rear axle before. It's something that is kind of intimidating. Um, I'll admit that even though I've been working on cars for 20 years and I've rebuilt engines, um, it was a little intimidating tackling, specifically the spacing aspects. I think that was the big concern. But the reality is, that for me, the pinion I got right the first try, and it only took a couple of tries on the back spacing uh, to get the uh, backlash correct by doing the left and right spacing on, on the differential uh, carrier. And really, um, it, it's not bad. If you're, if you're competent and you've done other significant efforts on cars, um, no reason to be afraid of doing this. Having some good tools helps, of course. Um, so like I said, tomorrow I'm hoping to bolt this up to the car and uh, be able to check this project off, uh, this part of the project off. Um, I'll show you something else that arrived kind of a little preview and if you saw I posted a little 15 second video of this um, and this is this is the intake I'm going to use um, I'll do another video where I talk about my my choices for the engine um, it's been an it's been sort of a an iterative and evolving process, but ultimately I really wanted to go with the classic Weber style look, um, and I was thinking about Webers for a while. Ultimately I decided to go with the Speedmaster uh, downdraft EFI setup. 
Um, it's a real good value. It uh, it only cost eight hundred and fifty eight dollars with with uh, free shipping. There's a place on eBay that sells them for that, and then if you call up Speedmaster Direct and quote that eBay price, they'll ma they will sell it to you for that. Um, Jags and Summit will sell it to you for like twelve hundred bucks. I I don't know why their pricing is the way it is. And this is specific for the 351 Windsor. Their prices are all, all over the map, depending on what engine you have. This is really a, a great value, so it was hard to pass up. Um, I was a little wary because of the price of what kind of quality it was going to be. But to be honest, I'm quite impressed so far. Um, everything's real tight. It's smooth. Um, it, it feels like it's a good quality. All the throttle bodies move together. Um, I haven't spent a whole lot of time looking at it yet, and I'll, I'll do a more in-depth video another time, I think, about that. But it, it feels like it's a good quality set, and uh, I'm real excited to put it on. My short block is supposed to arrive tomorrow, and um, I'm still waiting on my camshaft um, to come in. That was, that was sort of a special order. Um, and I'll talk more about that in another video. And uh, once I have the camshaft, I'll be able to start putting the short block together. So by the end of the month, I am hoping to have, uh, well, the rear axle should be in tomorrow. And then I'm hoping by the end of the month to have the engine assembled. Uh, this wonderful TKO 600 that I bought uh, attached to the engine, have it all bolted up into the car and uh, I won't have the electrical or anything like that done by the end of the month. I, I don't think I'll be anywhere near that. But I think that I should be getting pretty close to the point where it looks like a car and uh, looks like it uh, should fire up before too long. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, hit the like and subscribe if you want to see more. And uh, I will have a new video coming up before too long. Thanks.